to know you as a, a fixture of the Bay Area music scene. You know, you've, I know you've been here a while. Uh, what's the history of, of you and San Francisco and what sort of drew you here? I uh, grew up in New Jersey and the first city I knew was New York. My grandparents would take uh, us there to go to the circus, and, you know, um, go to Sardi's and have dinner or whatever. And then my folks were into musicals. They'd take me and my brother to see musicals. And um, then once I figured out the train going to Manhattan, I was always there hearing music. And I went to, uh, I just lived in the jazz clubs. I just saw all these, all this music that was very inspiring. But I always felt like New York, I didn't, I didn't really want to live there. It was, it was too big and it, it kind of felt like it was closing in on me. And I felt like I would be too influenced by the judgment of my family uh, wanting to be a musician. So I wanted to have some distance and live someplace. So I started hitchhiking around. And uh, my hitchhiking partner wanted to come to San Francisco. I wanted to go to Alberta, Canada. And I said, San Francisco, is that's done. There's no, that's the past. That's all the hippie thing. That's dust. That culture does not exist. And, uh, but he was insistent. I wanted to go to Alberta, and in South Dakota we caught a ride to Davis. So I thought, okay, well, we'll go to San Francisco first. And I came to San Francisco when I was 21, hitchhiking, and I had very low expectations. And it was like going on a blind date with someone that you were certain that you would hate and be repulsed by. And the complete opposite thing happened. That was smitten. I walked down the streets of Chinatown. I was just soaking it up. I couldn't believe it. I heard Chinese music coming from windows. And there was the Keystone Corner. Uh, Max Roach was playing. Then I rounded the corner, and there was City Lights books. And I, I, oh my God. And then I went, and I didn't even understand the geography of San Francisco that was on the sea. So I just fell in love with it. And I went back east. And I came back out two years later for a trip. And then I went back east again. And then I came back out when I was 24. And I've lived here since I was 24. And I just got enmeshed. And, uh, and I felt embraced. And <laughs> I see that you're embraced physically and spiritually every time I see you play music. I think it's, the place has been good to you, hasn't it? <laughs> it in many ways it has. It's, it's um, I like the scale of it. It's always challenged to be here in some ways. Um, and right now, San Francisco has some specific challenges. I feel very uh, fortunate that I could still live here. Uh, but a lot of people who are from my generation, um, who are musicians, m many of them have moved away, or passed away, or stopped playing. So now I'm kind of in this, like, you know, I'm the old guy who, uh, when I, a lot of people I play with are a generation or a generation and a half or um, starting to be two generations younger than me. And that's a trip. That's really interesting. Um, so I, I feel fortunate for that too. So you've got a you've got an interesting uh, spot here. Is there any? What are there a, a few things here that you would like to show off for us to keep the uh, the spot inspirational for you? So you've got your drum kit here. Yeah, I set up a drum set, um, and I put a big bass drum that I got in North Beach from that really wonderful North Beach Music Shop. One on one music. Yeah, that place is amazing. From Thomas. Uh, that was hanging from the ceiling. So I think that's interesting. This dulcimer is beautiful. I brought it down as a little show and tell item. Mm -hmm. uh, got an altar with a painting that my Aunt Edie made when in 1958. She was kind of an art spirit. Uh, she gave me the Who's record Tommy mm -hmm. 
when I was 12 and she gave me my first set of brushes. I didn't know what they were. And so I didn't really use them until I was 21. <laughs> but so it's, she's kind of a major figure in my life. Got some pictures of my ancestors, um, a wall of music, and then I got a bunch of paintings I made from overseas, and a plant that we just pruned that we're feeding, bringing back to life. A toy piano used to belong to my daughter. Uh, she's all grown up now. Now it's kind of broken, but it has kind of a cool sound. A piece of conduit that's used for electronics that I turn into a, a flat ride symbol. Wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I, just looking around now, a room service tray from New Orleans the year before Katrina has a nice kind of Tibetan bowl sound. Mm. Not to mention a Tibetan bowl and a tamborella from South Italy that's used to play tarantellas on. Uh, piano that I got for free. <laughs> Hamilton Baldwin, nice studio upright. That's just looking around the room now. That's probably enough. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I saw I saw some of the other episodes where you kind of like kind of picking up on them and looking at them. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Well, uh, thanks for inviting us into your space to Thank to you. share some share a little bit of you with us. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, ever want to see what I'm up to, you just go to a website, DaveMahali.com. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nice to have a chance. Yeah. Thank you. Would you like to play us a, a song? Sure. Right. I would. I would be happy to. Excellent. All right. Let's do it. All right.